Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 38 of the Unknown Comics Podcast. I'm Brandon. I'm Tanner. That's Tanner. And uh, and and Chris is not with us. I was mistaken. I yeah. I, I posted that he was going to be joining us, and and, and he last uh, minute chickened out on us. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, it'll just be the two of us. That's what you get. Sorry, and you get all of this nasally uh, West Texas allergy head that I've gotten because I uh, went to do a a scout for a video shoot and got into weeds and Don't tall grass love doing stuff on location oh my gosh and it just wrecked me um that and i got goat heads all over my yeah. socks and stuff like that it was uh yeah that was not fun anywho that's what's happening here i'm gonna try my best not to <laughs> on mic a whole lot i can hear it so <laughs> you know every time i see tanner like point at his nose that'll, that'll be my signal i'm snorting too much <laughs> in the microphone Anyway, pretty light week as far as news goes. Uh, we had a couple of trailers uh, that we'll talk about. Um, you know, comics we're, we're talking about on our comic chat, which is happening mm-hmm. on Wednesdays at 4. Um, so now that we've kind of expanded our Twitch lineup, we're kind of focusing our discussions. This podcast will still kind of be the all-encompassing yeah. uh, like podcast. Pop culture. Yeah, but Tuesdays at 4, we have our hobby hangout. That's where Tanner's going to talk. Uh, miniatures, uh, mini wargaming uh Warhammer. Yeah. Well, it's not alive. I, I painted up some uh, the orc train from Kill Teams this there week. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Wednesdays, of course, is the comic chat. Uh, Thursdays at 7, we'll stay the, this podcast. And then uh, Fridays at 4 is our Magic Live. Now, if, about Magic if you missed the comic chat live, uh, I reposted it on Thursdays on YouTube. Oh, there you go. Now, the, the, the hobby hangout, the Magic, we don't repost, but the comic yeah. chat, we are reposting. Yeah. So there you go. So that's kind of our Twitch schedule. So as far as talking about specific books and stuff, uh, Chris and Tanner will take care of that. Uh, We're the ones that read. (laughs) Yeah. I read. I just don't read current. Yeah, because you read on the app. I read on Unlimited, so I'm three months behind everybody. Um, So I read. But uh, that and I'm at work on Wednesdays at 4. So yeah, like my real job. Doing doing real things. (laughs) Not just just goofing around here. (laughs) So anyway... Uh, so, so earlier today, um, uh, of course they released the new trailers for, uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage, um, which I still haven't seen the first one. So I've seen the first, I haven't seen the new trailer, but I've yeah. seen the first trailer. So new trailer came out. Of course it comes out, uh, on the first of October. I didn't realize it was coming that quick. Chris said something in chat and I was just like, well, Whoa. so they kept moving it back and then all of a sudden they decided to move it forward. That's crazy. Yeah, that didn't normally happen. Shang Chi did really well, I guess, and then they're like, "Hey, let's uh, go ahead and move our <laughs> right. movie up," uh, which I think it's already done. What Black Widow's done? Oh yeah, and yeah, in box office or something like that, something like that. Anywho, uh, so uh, so that's coming up, and so Donny Cates was on Twitter because <laughs> I guess part of the the trailer is they talk about uh, Venom. Uh, what, whatever planet, whatever the Ming are from. Yeah, it sounded Chinese to me, but like, like, kind of like racist Chinese <laughs> is what it sounded like. Uh, not like proper, you know, edifying Chinese. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> and Donnie Case went to Twitter and said it's pronounced Clintar. <laughs> yep. And then he went on to clarify that they technically don't have a home planet. Clintar is their name for you know being locked up, yeah. being in a cage or whatever, and. And, like, he got some backlash on it, like, that he was hating on the Carnage. Like, all these news articles, Donny Hates is criticizing the Carnage movie. And, like, he had to come out and say, I'm just, like, it was a joke. <laughs> like, funny. from one line in the trailer, I made a joke, you know. He's like, I love the character. I'm, I haven't even seen the movie yet. I can't criticize it. Um, right, right. So, uh, a big stink about... Uh, that all because well because it gives everybody a nice clickbait title for their uh, website yeah oh exactly yeah that's all it is internet news is so it's crappy yeah like and what i love is when i click a news article and what they're reporting on is they're reporting on some other website's news article Mm -hmm. even like our local news when i see an article on our local news stations Facebook yeah. page. I expect an article from the Texas Panhandle. Yeah. No, it's ne- it's always no, somewhere across the country. Yeah, they're reposting something from. One it people. happened three months ago. Yeah. No, I, I I hate you know that you you log into you know comic book 
CBR or something. Mm-hmm. And they're reporting about something that was reported on Bleeding Cool. And they're like, that's not your story. Yeah, it's just... Like, that. to me, that is totally unethical media-wise. It's just the rumor mill is all that yeah, is. Yeah, all you're trying to do is get... You're, you're trying to leverage what somebody else has reported as clicks. Mm-hmm. And it just... Uh, I, I don't like internet media. Yep. As far as news. I need it. I mean, there there is legit news out there. Um, and then it's yeah. always... and then it, and, Or the articles that are really nothing. Right. They're just like... I, I, I was flipping through. I use Flipboard on my iOS, and, and so I track a bunch of... I get a lot of my news that way. And uh, there was an article that Ms. Marvel is not coming out on October 1st. And then I flipped down. Hawkeye is not coming out on October 1st, and it's the same website. And the article is about... One, Miss Marvel was pushed to 2022. Right. Which we knew was coming. But neither one were, I don't think, were ever teased to come out on October exactly. 1st. Exactly. Like, they're, it's non-news. Yeah. Like, that. that is nothing. I don't know. Slow news day. Yeah. So, yes, Miss Marvel was delayed, but, like, we kind of knew it was delayed without them saying it. Like, yeah. Like, we knew there was nothing left in their schedule. Like, they're, the MCU and, and Disney Plus, they're, they're pretty well... Packed out for the rest of the year, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what if is still going, uh, which we're actually probably not going to talk about tonight. Uh, <laughs> I didn't watch it. <laughs> Tanner didn't watch it. Tanner's kind of lost it. <sighs> I, okay, we will talk about it a little so, bit. So, which, I mean, we can get into it now or wait till the end in our spoiler part of the show, but I did actually think of an explanation last night of kind of why I don't like you, it. You finally, you finally pinned down. I, I can well, put not, it into words. It's not spoilers. It's, it's so, a, so, if you think of the MCU as the way that the comics are published, we're currently in a crossover event, starting with Loki. Okay. That's going to bridge Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, yeah. and Ant-Man at least. Yeah. What If is a series of tie-ins, <laughs> and I hate reading the tie-in issues. Okay. That, that they're adjacent to something, but they really have nothing to do with the thing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Um. Without spoiling anything, and I actually, honestly, I don't think we'll actually really talk about the episode in spoiler detail. Uh, this last episode was just like, why? I, I, I did not, I did not care for it at all. It was, uh, it was just really stretching for a concept. Mm-hmm. Um, now it is setting up something else, um, whether it's later this season or or next season, that seems fairly interesting. But but this episode on an island just. Nah, it was yeah. kind of it was boring. It was. What if Thor was a frat boy? Okay, essentially, I basically mean, he doesn't grow up with Loki, so he becomes a frat boy. <laughs> basically, isn't that just what happened between uh, Infinity Wars and Endgame anyway? Right, <laughs> right. I guess that was their justification for for kind of going in that angle, but yeah, it just it didn't it didn't hit for me. So that that was that was what if uh, for this week. Um, so, so last week we got some news, man, the hits just keep coming for diamond comics. IDW is now moving to penguin random house as well. Yeah. And I'm, we, we honestly could have guessed that one because they work so work closely with Marvel and Disney anyway, but still it's another decently large publisher that's moving. Yeah. So, so I'm trying to think, so who all of the major publishers, who all is still with diamond. So image, image dynamite, boom. Yeah. Uh, and then all the teeny tiny ones. Right. Right. Which some, I mean, some of those are starting to get bigger. Um, Aftershock is publishing several books. Dark Horse is still, Dark with Horse that. is still with them. With Diamond. Yeah. Um, the problem Dark, with, Dark Horse is kind of a shadow of there's a, you know, they're all. Yeah. Sales. Well, and the, the problem with Dark Horse is you never know when the book's actually going to come out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, man, it's, it's what I'm afraid of now is that, Penguin Random House now becomes the new diamond, right? Yeah. Everybody starts migrating over there. And then we basically just we just shifted. We just pivoted to this different company. Right. And, right? you know, I don't want to see it because that was always the problem with diamond is it was a monopoly. Yeah. And so it doesn't matter how bad they messed up. There wasn't anything you could do about it because yeah. there was no competitor. Um, I, I would say best case scenario would be, you know, Half of the companies go to Penguin, half of them go to Lunar. The best thing is that that Marvel and DC they they distribute to multiple they they print for multiple distribution houses. 
Right. And so as a store, you have a choice of who you right. pick to get your Marvel books from. That's the best option. It's, That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And, and it just sucks for, you know, yeah. the comic store owner, right? Yeah. Because they don't get that choice of who. I mean, for games and stuff, we have a slew of distributors we can get stuff from. Right. Comics aren't that way, and it's sad. Yeah, I mean, because it just makes it that much harder harder to, for one, even get a hold of them. Because, like I said, if they mess up, there's no there's no responsibility on their half, their side. Yeah. Because there's no competitor that says, well, I'm just going to take my business over here. They're like, nope, if you want your comics, then you're going to deal with the way we do things. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and and their processes and, you know, you know their, their order ahead, their FOC and all that. Yeah, just... Uh, it's not cool, man. Um, but like I said, and maybe I don't know. Maybe all these these this movement. I get. I guess maybe Penguin Random House kind of has it in their head that this could happen to them if they. But here's the thing: they don't. They're not these these publishers aren't moving because of how they work with the comic stores. Mm-hmm. They're they're moving for other reasons, right? You know, well, and, and there's as far as I know, all three companies that have left are still with Diamond on an international basis, right? So, I mean, it's not like they're completely losing customers, yeah. There's still it's just the world of ordering comics is changing, yep. So, or is it? I mean, like I said, it we I, I haven't talked to Chris to see kind of what Penguin's model looks like, but it, from what I gathered, it's similar as far as how how they order. Yeah, I do. I don't know. I don't know what the big changes are. So, anywho. Um, so, yeah, that happened. Um, so, yeah, we got a couple of trailers this week. The first one I saw, we got the Red Band trailer for the new Injustice uh, DC movie, mm-hmm. um, which I, I knew of the games um, and loosely knew kind of the, the, the main story arc, right? Mm-hmm. That, that it's an alternate timeline where super, Superman pretty much just goes, you know, Full tragedy turns into a dictator, and and it's the rest of the former Justice League trying to stop him. And they play Mortal Kombat too. Yeah, they start a tournament, um, and Otherworld comes, and Outworld comes. Oh no, that's totally different. Nope. Sorry, 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 sorry. And Freddy Krueger and Jason aren't they all in there? I can't remember anymore. Um, so yeah, I saw this and I was like, hey, you know what? I'll I'll click on it and I'll see because I. DC has very has leaned hard into the animated stuff for years. That's mm-hmm. kind of been their their bread. They've and been good at it. Yeah, they've been good at the animated stuff. Um, personally, I I've watched a couple of the Batman animated. I think I watched Year One and The Killing Joke. Okay, um, I do remember watching those. Um, and I watched the Harley Quinn series, uh, which whew, that's a whole another yeah. series. Um, this one actually, I'm I'm interested in seeing, and and I like that it's, you know, the self-contained story. Um, yeah, and they they took they do that with uh, all all of their animated movies. Base, I mean, basically their animated movies is a graphic novel. Yeah, it's the straight up. Uh, so, uh, me and Ollie, we watched we've watched just about every Superman one they've put out. You're not gonna want to watch this with Ollie. No, <laughs> no. Yeah, no. I watched the trailer. No, this is this is definitely the R-rated. Um, you know, uh, the, the trailer, you basically, you watch Superman, uh, punch Joker through his chest, which I think he does do that in the game In the game that sounds Mortal Kombat ish. Yeah. You know, you've got to go through the body part or decapitate uh-huh. something for it to be, for it to be proper. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's curious to see if they do the, cause I, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, the Injustice series actually blends in the prime alternate versions in a, of everybody too. In a way. So he goes crazy and uh, basically it's not the prime versions because the prime versions are different characters that their powers uh, are similar to an actual Justice League members. Right. He goes crazy and then certain members of the Justice League – just actually become part of his regime. Right. Uh, and then, of course, Batman and a handful of uh, other other heroes, but mostly the villains that kind of border 
the line of as to whether they're good or bad. Right. Start a resistance. Right. But something about Batman, like, pulling other versions from the prime reality happened in the game. Because, yeah, like... Yeah, that might be how... Because that... they, they pull Superman in from the other reality, and that's how they they stop him or something like that. Yeah, it's been a long time since I've played through the first game, but yeah. there there is some interdimensional yeah. crossover there. So whether or not they kind of they kind of go that route, I, I, I distinctly remember there's a like Superman regime and a Resistance costume for every character. Mm. So okay, interesting. So yeah, uh, no looks looks interesting. I'll probably pick it up. I mean, it's now part of HBO Max, so it's hard. Yeah. For, you know, it was hard for me to keep up when it was the DC Unlimited. Or whatever they were calling mm-hmm. it. Um, now that it's all just rolled into HBO Max, it's like yep. yeah, because I, I I didn't do DC, DC Unlimited. I would just wait and see what was on the end cap at Walmart. Yeah, because you know, most they're all direct DVD releases. Yeah, yep. So also we got the and I didn't even know this was coming. I didn't either. Like Hulu is doing a Hit Monkey show. And no, I take that back. I do I do vaguely remember they talk they talked about it when they. Uh, they talked about Modoc coming, which I still haven't okay. actually finished. I th- I, I think watched I the first finished. episode and I just it's, stopped. It was it it exists. <laughs> not <laughs> not not impressed. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't bad, yeah. but it, uh, it was there. So so Hit Monkey is getting his own show. Of course, uh, Jason Sudeikis vo- voices some character in it. I, I, didn't I don't recognize from the trailer. I don't know enough about Hit Monkey as a Marvel character. I don't either. I was like, "What is Hit Monkey?" He's I had of, to go look it I up. I mean, he is one of those characters like Howard the Duck that's just kind of on the uh-huh. on the outskirts and is just weird. Um, it's it's the Hitman Monkey. That's just what you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, but yeah, uh, so so apparently Jason Sudeikis took time off of being Ted Lasso to. Divorce. Olivia Munn was in the, tr- uh-huh. the credits. And uh, somebody else. I'm trying to remember. Those are the only two I remember off the top of my head. Yeah. Uh, oh, George Takei. Yes. I do remember hearing his voice yeah. in it. I think he's the bad guy. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, there you go. Hit Monkey coming to Hulu. Um, it, it, I, I like that. I like that Disney is leveraging Hulu as kind of their. This is where we can do kind of the the darker, bluer. Stuff, yeah, I like right? that too because for one, I don't want that stuff on Disney because I can just kind of let my kids have free reign with Disney. Yeah, and not worry too much about it. Yeah, and also I still feel super weird if they ever did merge the apps. Like I don't want to go watch It's Always Sunny and Letter Kitty on Disney, Disney Plus. Plus. Like it's yeah. just weird. Yeah. No, and I mean, like it's you know when Deadpool three happens. You know, yeah, where's it? Where's it dropping? Right, right. Um, your gut would tell you they're they're going to put that straight to Hulu and not not worry about Disney Plus. But you know, what if kind of straddled some stuff and and yeah. Now that's definitely not TVM or or rated R content, right? It's um, it's PG thirteen, but yeah. Um, I mean, I would say most of the Marvel stuff they've been putting out there kind of straddles that line to to some extent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit. So, so yeah. That's uh that is this week. So um also uh let's see, Friday, as of as of this this Friday, we're recording this on a on a Thursday. Tomorrow, uh Foundation comes out on Apple TV Plus. And for those that don't know, Foundation is a it's a it's a novel series that Isaac Asimov, kind of one of the the big science old school science fiction writers, uh wrote. And uh I'm not going to get into the weeds about what Foundation is. It's it's kind of one of those big epic scale mm-hmm. science fiction science fiction arts uh, is getting adapted to a television series on Apple TV Plus, um, and we're starting to see now that what I'm calling cinematic television is a thing now. It's opened up a lot more of novels and stuff from sci-fi and fantasy's past to finally get that adaptation, you know, like things that you couldn't do in a film. Right. Right. Foundation was probably one of those. A wheel of time yeah. is, is getting a television series that, you know, and, and it kind of, it kind of started with like the expanse, right? Those series of books getting made in television. 
Game and then of course Game of Thrones being the big breakout one of mm-hmm. you know these big epic fantasy novel series that are that are getting uh, these adaptations now. Dune of course is getting a multiple film release um, as kind of its. I didn't realize there was multiple films. Yes, oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, this one coming out in a few weeks is going to be is the first part of two. Okay, because um, it's that big of a story. Now I don't know how that's splitting or what he's pulling out to mm-hmm. kind of make it, but. But yeah, so so the question the question tonight, um, and uh, and we'll go ahead and and kind of let everybody kind of chew on a little bit while we let this ad run, um, is what science fiction novel franchise or or book? It could just be one book. Have we not seen in a live action television or film format that you really want to see done or redone? Maybe it has been done and it just wasn't good, and it was just not a shell of what it. You know what it could be. Uh, you know what what is that? What is that franchise? So so Tanner and I are, are chewing kind of on our on our ideas. We're gonna for the non live viewers uh, or for the live viewers. Sorry, we're gonna run this ad real quick and then we'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. So this is, so we're we're talking about science fiction, fantasy, film, fran- or novels or or novel series. Uh, that that you would want to see made into a live action, um, either long form television series or 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 film series. Go. Okay, I got, I've got several. Okay, some of them are some. They're newer. So. And and I gave Tanner the uh, the caveat, not Warhammer. Yeah, I'm gonna break that. But uh, <laughs> so first off, first one would be a remake, um, and that's Starship Trooper. Okay, I would want to see a better. I I think the first movie is good. And I love the other movies, but they're bad movies. So I, I'd want to see a Starship Trooper that's a little bit more <sighs> serious. The first Star... Well, here's the thing. How serious was the novel, really? I mean, it because Robert Heinlein wrote it, it was it was very much a... He, he, he weaved a lot of politics into yeah. it. Yeah. Right? And so it was almost kind of a satire in yeah. of itself, a little bit. And I think they tapped into that in that first movie. The first one they did... Yeah, the uh, propaganda s- cuts and stuff like or that. Even if we just saw something more like the first one, just ex- just expanded, expanded a little bit more. M- more stories. The second one was the horror one, and that was kind of weird. See, I never. I've only ever watched the first movie. Yeah, the second one they end up in this base, like so. It's like aliens. It looks like aliens. A little survival horror. And then the third one. I don't even remember anything except for the very end. Rico shows up in like a mech suit. And that's all I remember from the third one. Interesting. Okay. And there's like, they find like a super brain bug or something like that. But there's always a bigger bug. There's always a bigger bug. <laughs> um, so that was, that's probably the the closest one that it, like actually fits your criteria. Cause the, the, the two or other ones are newer. That I wouldn't know if they count as classic sci-fi. Okay. Um, but I'd want to see a live action halo. I think a lot of people would. Yeah. Something. I mean, they did the Microsoft did the little mini series thing that was just about the Marines. Yeah. Uh, but no, I want to see a live action Halo about Spartans. Yeah. And then the of course the third one is the Horus Heresy. Yeah. Specifically the Horus. The Horus Heresy. Heresy from Warhammer. Yeah. Uh, no, I think. And I think I think it's likely now with Warhammer Plus we could possibly get that. You've got to be thinking Games Workshop's getting ready to I tap do into know that. that they they've mentioned working on an Eisenhorn live action with Amazon yeah. coming in the next few years, but I w- just the the politics of the Primarchs. Yeah. I think very much fits a Game of Thrones style story. Even the, even the first three books, like even if they just did the first three, yeah, books. the the Loken series. Uh-huh. Um, I think I think it would be. It'd be pretty good. Uh, so for me, um, and they, uh, I guess this would technically count as a remake because they did a direct to DVD animated movie, uh, but it is the Dragonlance, uh, okay, Chronicle series. Mm-hmm. Um, so Dragonlance, uh, for those that don't know, was a, or I guess is, doesn't hasn't really been published because there's a bunch of weird legal stuff around it. But Dragonlance was a setting inside of Dungeons and Dragons mm-hmm. for the longest time. And the 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 two people that created it, of course, also wrote wrote novels, which was very common at the time. That that you know TSR would print all the modules, and then they would have 
novels to go along with it. Right. Forgotten Realms and you know Ravenloft and and the bigger the bigger settings. Dragonlance to me uh, was just it was epic. Now it was very much in the same vein as Lord of the Rings. You did have this fellowship type kind of group, mm-hmm. and they get splintered, and they're trying to stop the big you know world changing event. It, it's a pretty typical fantasy story, but the characters are just really great. Yeah. Um, and and so it was the main chronicles arc. Of course, there were there were tons of novels set in Dragonlance, but the kind of the the core were the these three books: Dragons of Autumn Twilight, uh, Dragons of Winter Night, and Dragons of Spring Dawning. That was like the the main chronicles trilogy that told uh, this big story, and it was cool because. Um, Generally, people started reading with Dragons of Autumn Twilight. It was the first book that came out. Well, a lot of the main characters already had histories with each other. Like, yeah, like in the back of the author's minds, they were they kind of already had histories, and and it was playing into that. And it'd touch on why and stuff. And later, they'd go back in novels and kind of fleshed out. But it's funny being a D and D. He skipped the whole tavern scene. <laughs> Actually, the first scene is is them regrouping at a tavern. Um, fun. Uh, ironically enough, but no, that is, that is hilarious that that's the trope. Uh, but I think it would, I think it, I think it would be great live action if it was done well. Um, you know, and, and I don't know, like I said, a trilogy of books, I think, I think would make for a great, uh, fantasy series. Um, I think it would, I think it would do best maybe in the TV series format. I don't, you'd have to make a lot of films. Um, yeah, I, and with these epic stories, I think they really do fit the TV so- s- format better. Because they're chapters. They're, and it's so uh-huh. much easier to develop a character over a season than it is a movie. Yeah. The, if you're going to do it in a movie format, the, the characters kind of have to be established already. Yeah, yeah, with with a, even a three-hour movie. I mean, that's the, I mean that's to me, that's one of the reasons why it's so easy to do superhero movies, because those characters are so ingrained into pop culture yes. that you don't have to set them up as much. Right, right, yeah. You you kind of have to do a little bit of exposition just to kind of frame them in this mm-hmm. version, uh, but yeah. So so yeah, Dragonlance is, is one of mine. Um, other novel franchises, um, I would like to see some. So most of the sci-fi that I've read is old uh, Star Wars expanded universe. Yeah, and I would like to see some of those stories kind of brought to the screen yeah even if they've they're reworked to fit the new canon to some degree like the republic mandos was an awesome story uh the x-wing series was really good Mm -hmm. i mean there was a lot of stuff there and and they are bringing some of it over with like thrawn starting to show up in the mandalorian Mm -hmm. so yeah so yeah so yeah i'm trying to think of other here's the thing is a lot of them are getting made yeah like like Finally getting, you know, hopefully this is finally the proper Dune treatment that, you know, the, the fans of the book have been have been wanting. Um, and reviews have kind of been, like, it's already getting reviewed. Like, it's already yeah. been. And it's kind of, eh, people are like. I can see that. I mean, it's kind of a, uh, it's a complex story. Yeah. It's not something that you're just going to want to go casually see. Yeah. I, I think I think this is, a, this this version is, is a movie that, that's trying to. To pander to the the fans of the novel, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of other novels that I just I just fell in love with that haven't already been. Um, I would say some more of the Tolkien stuff, but Amazon's working on that. Yeah, yeah, Tolkien's getting it. Um, I'm trying to think other other big sci-fi and fantasy franchises that I've read. And of course, I I, I never was a huge. Uh, novel reader i was more of a more of a comic book graphic novel reader um i was a novel reader but like i said most of the novels i read was star wars yeah or it, mo- most of the stuff i w- was reading was already associated with, with a, a with a different franchise with, with an with, on-screen franchise yeah. be it video game or movie yeah yeah I, I get that um i and i love like magic the gathering lore i think yeah I, which, which we're getting an animated. we're getting we're getting the animated series and i think maybe i would I'd much rather see because of the way magic's printing lore stories. Now they're, they're almost doing a bunch of short stories Mm -hmm. and anthology series. Like don't do just one big arc over a series, you know, do, you know, bounce it around and stuff like that. I think I would would like to see like an anthology, like a anthology at first. 
and then maybe one of the more popular planeswalker picked off to be do something more in depth yeah yeah different art yeah just it kind of spins up spins itself off into something Mm -hmm. something bigger which like i said i think that's possibly what they're trying to do with what if you know they're just they're just throwing a bunch of stuff out there and if they kind of create this little spinoff that could work captain carter it'll work so they're trying it's gonna happen they don't have any real ideas for phase six so they're using what if to try and figure out what they're gonna do (laughs) wouldn't put it past them so but yeah uh i think that's really all that we have for this week um like i said wasn't wasn't a big big week for for announcements we got like i said we got venom coming up next week next week venom's next week uh we've got dune the week after i believe let me let me double check that um I'm super excited for that. No, come on, internet. Dune release date is October 22nd. So no, a couple weeks. We're about a month out from Dune. Which is crazy that it's already been previewed and released that far in advance. Well, they want all the critical reviews to market with. I guess. But I I just, even even back pre-COVID, I don't remember reviews hitting this early ahead of a of a film release. So yeah, I don't, I don't pay that close attention. I don't, I don't remember life before all this, <laughs> you know, when you could, you know, go places and do things. What was that? I don't know. Who knows? But you can always join us here every Thursday at seven, right here on Twitch live for the uh, Unknown Comics podcast. Uh, but if you can't watch us live, it's on YouTube. Uh, we post it on YouTube every Friday. Uh, this podcast, and uh, you can get it wherever podcasts are to be gotten. You sure can. Everywhere. Everywhere. And if, like I said, if you know of a place where our podcast is not, let us know so we can we can rub our podcast distribution tools nose in it. And uh, so, bad dog. If you're uh, listening live, don't forget to join us tomorrow, Friday, for Magic Live at yep. four Central, and then Tuesdays at four Central for a hobby hangout. Hobby hangout. So, all right, everyone, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>